Chapter 38 of The Seventh Most Important Thing by Shelley Pearsall. It turned out that Arthur wasn't the only one keeping secrets from people. The next day, his sister dropped a bombshell about their mom. Mom's got a boyfriend who's coming over for supper on Friday, she told Arthur while they were sitting in the kitchen polishing off a bag of corn chips after school. What? Arthur felt as if someone had suddenly dumped a barrel of ice water over his head. His whole body turned cold in an instant. But I'm not supposed to tell you, Barbara replied quickly as she shoved a handful of Fritos into her mouth. Mom said she's going to talk to you about it later when the time is right. Arthur sat frozen in his dad's chair in the banana yellow kitchen that his dad had painted, unable to believe what his sister had just said. His mom had a boyfriend? And he was coming over to their house for supper? This was way worse than throwing out his dad's stuff. This was throwing out his dad and replacing him with someone else. How could his mom do this to him, to them? Barbara stopped eating and stared at him. You look kind of strange. Are you okay, Arthur? You look like you're going to throw up. Arthur shook his head. I'm fine. She pushed the bag, the Frito bag, closer to him. You can have the rest if you want. That's okay. You want to watch some cartoons with me? No. Barbara tilted her blonde head, studying him. I think you look sick. You should go to bed. I can bring you a thermometer and a bucket if you want one. Stop it. Just go and watch some TV, Barbara, Arthur snapped. All right. Barbara slid off the chair. She bounced from one foot to the other, standing in the kitchen doorway as if she was uncertain about leaving or needed to pee. You sure? She said. Arthur had to bite his tongue to keep himself from shouting, shut up and leave me alone at Barbara. Instead, he looked at the clock above the stove and told her in the most patient voice he could manage that if she didn't hurry, she was going to miss Looney Tunes. Okay, I'm going. But before she left, Barbara said in a rush, his name is Roger, and I've met him already, and he's pretty nice. He's a carpenter. Do you know what they do? Arthur felt his heart squeezing into a tighter and tighter ball. It was just a coincidence, he tried to tell himself. He builds things out of pieces of wood, Barbara shouted proudly, and he's making a birdhouse for Mom. But don't tell her, okay? Okay, Arthur nodded, feeling numb. There was no way some loser named Roger could be the fourth most important thing. the fourth most important thing. Roger the carpenter wasn't the kind of person Arthur expected him to be. He'd pictured a slimeball guy who had probably swept his mom off her feet because she was lonely and sad and needed someone to talk to. Arthur's mom told him they'd met at her new job, the dentist's office job that she'd only had since the beginning of January. Roger had been building some new cabinets for the dentist and they'd chatted over lunch. All he brought to eat was a candy bar, so I gave him some of my homemade ham salad, she said. Then he'd asked her out for coffee after work, and they'd gone out for coffee a few times since then. He's been very nice to me, Arthur's mom insisted, so I invited him to supper on Friday. Will you at least meet him and see what you think? He promised nothing. Roger arrived early on Friday. Arthur heard the doorbell ring at five, but he didn't wander downstairs to meet the guy until Roger had already been there for about half an hour talking with his mom and Barbara. As it turned out, Roger was balding and short and looked about ten years older than Arthur's dad had been. He wore a striped shirt tucked into pants that appeared to have been bought that afternoon. The only thing missing was the price tag. You must be Arthur, the guy said, standing up quickly when Arthur came into the living room. He nearly knocked over his drink on the shaky tray table beside the chair. I'm Roger Dent. Good to meet you. Roger Dent from the dentist's office? Good grief. It was like being in a bad TV comedy. Barbara, go and get the lovely birdhouse Roger made for us so your brother can see it, Arthur's mom said in this strangely happy voice that sounded exactly like Wimla Flintstones. Barbara carried the birdhouse from the hallway and set it in Arthur's lap. What do you think? She said, hands on her hips. Arthur had to admit it looked as if Roger Dent had put some serious time into it. The roof had tiny shingles made out of the ends of popsicle sticks. There were two small windows on the front outlined with matchsticks. Isn't it beautiful? Arthur's mom raved. From the starstruck look on his mom's face, Arthur had no doubt Roger the carpenter, who made beautiful things out of wood, was the fourth most important thing, at least for his mom. Are we ready to eat now? Arthur's mom asked everyone in the same Wilma Flintstone voice. Arthur really wanted to say no but he didn't want to upset his mom. Supper seemed to last forever. Unlike Arthur's dad, Roger Dent was not a big talker, 
So there were long silences when all you could hear was food being chewed and silverware clinking on the plates. Between the silences, Barbara told endless stories about her school friends, who was mad at who, who was friends with who, and Arthur's mom kept nervously asking if everything tasted okay and if everybody, if anybody needed more food. Arthur tried not to glance in Roger Dent's direction at all. At least the guy wasn't sitting in his dad's old seat. Arthur had told his mom he wouldn't be part of the dinner with Roger or any dinner ever if her boyfriend sat in his dad's chair. So his mom was sitting there instead. He wondered what his mom had told Roger Dent about them. If the guy knew about his dad dying in a motorcycle accident and about him being in juvie, it probably wasn't the kind of news you shared until you knew somebody pretty well, he decided. Yeah, my husband only died a few months ago and my son is a brick-throwing juvenile delinquent. Probably wasn't a good conversation starter. Toward the end of the meal, Arthur's mom looked over at him and said in this shaky, tense sort of voice, You've been quiet, Arthur. Arthur didn't dare point out that Roger Dent hadn't exactly been a great conversationalist either. He could see that his mom was on the verge of losing it, and he knew he'd better not push her much closer to the edge. So, um, other than birdhouses, what kinds of stuff do you build? He asked Roger Dent, trying to sound slightly interested. Which, of course, he wasn't. But the guy grabbed hold of that question and wouldn't let go. He talked for about 30 minutes straight, reciting all the projects he'd done. Kitchen cabinets, bookshelves, garden sheds, playhouses, even a custom doghouse for some movie star's dog once. Roger said he'd learned carpentry from his grandfather. Then he went into a long story about how he'd started his own business with nothing but a box of tools from his grandpa and a rusted out Ford truck. Until I got my first job, I lived in that truck, he told them. He described how he'd slept in parking lots and stayed at campgrounds. The story was more interesting than Arthur had thought it would be. Although he wouldn't admit this to anyone, there were times he'd thought it would be fun to build houses someday. He remembered designing a house for an art class project back in the sixth grade. He'd drawn it with a third floor tower all for himself. The tower had its own bedroom, living room, and bathroom. Plus, there was a swimming pool on the roof and a helicopter landing pad in the front yard. Okay, that was a little crazy, but hey, he'd gotten an A+. By the time Roger finished talking, the rest of the food was cold. But Arthur could tell his mom and Roger Dent were a lot happier. His mom had this goofy smile on her face. Arthur wasn't sure how he felt. Loyal and disloyal to his dad at the same time. Mostly, he wished he'd just kept his big mouth shut. It was a lot easier to dislike someone you didn't know anything about.